Sarah, that stock is under pressure because the company added just one million uh, of their key user metric. That's our monetizable daily active users, adding just one million over the course of the quarter, ending the quarter with 187 million monetizable daily active users versus an estimate of 195 million. So that fell short of expectations, but the company did beat on the top and bottom line, reporting revenue of 936 million versus a 770. 777 million estimated and earnings per share for Twitter coming in at 19 cents versus a six cents estimated in EPS. But I want to point out two key things here in their earnings release. They do say um, the period surrounding the U.S. election is somewhat uncertain, but we have no reason to believe that September's revenue trends, which are plus 19 percent, can't continue or even improve outside of the election related window. Now, I did speak to Ned Siegel, he's Twitter CFO, and I asked him about about the fact that Twitter's user growth was so slow in Q3. And he told me this. He said, between the U.S. election and ongoing product improvements, we remain optimistic that we can continue to deliver daily active user growth over time. He said the fourth quarter is typically seasonally slow, but it doesn't typically have a U.S. election in it. And he went on to say that the election they see as a key time to show p people that Twitter is a tr trusted place for news and information and to show all the progress they've been making about the health of the platform. But as you see there, Sarah, those Twitter shares are down. Um, despite the improvement in revenue, it does seem like there is meaningful concern that last quarter's mm -hmm. significant user growth may have just been a one quarter blip. We have just one million active uh, daily active monetizable daily active users added this quarter. Back to you. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.